Hello. I would like to talk about how to systematically compute probabilistic constraints such as optimal pool bell type inequalities by assessing extreme situations. And you can find uh, this talk, these slides of this talk also at my web page um, under, this URL, under this URL. So let's just uh, jump start right into the matter. And um, let me give you the big picture, at least as far as I see the strategies and the tactics behind those methods. Well, um, first, um, uh, the, the first thing you have to do is you have to take observables from quantum mechanical configurations inspired by faithful orthogonal representations as vectors in Hilbert space. That is, uh, you take uh, the observables you take from quantum mechanics. And um, if you do that, then um, Um, you, you do the following. So you have the quantum observables, the bag of quantum observables. Um, uh, after that, you force upon these, uh, this bag of quantum observables, which you uh, conveniently represent as graphs or hypergraphs. Uh, you force upon uh, these observables um, in, a, a, a quantum mechanical interpretation. That is, uh, you, you uh, represent them as, um, as uh, basically vectors or uh, linear subspaces or uh, orthogonal projection operators corresponding to a unit vector, let's say. I mean, uh, most of the time you have, uh, you have this uh, already uh, from, from your first step, taking the quantum observables, but, but you just uh, take the consequences thereof. And afterwards, you do in a second step, uh, you, you force upon uh, these propositional structures a classical interpretation. And what is a classical interpretation? A classical interpretation is um, a, a so-called two-valued state or valuation <clears throat> which associates with, with each observable a unique true or false outcome. And this um, should... Um, in most of the cases uh, considered here, not depend on uh, uh, the observables that you co-measure with it within a given context. So, so this should be context independent. You don't assume that the observable, the classic observable uh, depends on on, on the particular context, uh, on other measurements, you measure it alongside this. This is a long, uh, a long standing uh, idea um, that you should, um, should also consider in quantum mechanics, um, things that you measure alongside, but in classical mechanics, you don't have this. You refuse um, classical, in the, you, you don't, you, you pretend classical interpretations are non-contextual don't depend on whatever you measure alongside with it. And then, of course, you observe the discrepancies between the classical and the quantum predictions. And uh, you say that one or the other or both are fals falsified. There is a technical issue though. Since observable discrepancies occur, occur only in cases involving complementarity, that is involving two or more contexts, which are different. Um, <clears throat> or uh, um, similar um, um, nomenclature is Boolean subalgebra, maximal observables or blocks. These arguments necessitate counterfactual reasoning because you cannot from, if you have two co contexts, you can only measure one at a time and not both of them at the same time. That's, that's one of the um, basic features of com complementarity. Mm. 
<clears throat> now, um, the bull bell type inequalities discussed by Froissart and Pitovsky and Cyrilson and other people, they involve isolated non-intertwined contexts. Uh, there are intertwined contexts which still have classic interpretations, but those are weird. I mean, uh, Cabello calls them, Adam Cabello calls them in some instances Hardy type because Hardy uh, was one of many people um, investigating those. And then <clears throat> there are inter intertwined contexts which, which still, that still have a classical interpretation, but cannot be embedded faithfully in a classical realm. That is, um, for instance, uh, they have a non-separating or non-unital set of two valued states. Non-separating means that um, you cannot, by classical means, separate two observables. And non-unital means that, uh, that uh, the respective observables are, for instance, uh, they, they cannot acquire the value true. Yeah? This is very weird. We will come back to these issues later. So um, even if they are intertwined, these contexts, you can have uh, the situation that they have um, a weird probabilistic interpretation, but there is a further demarcation criterion, which uh, was given by Coach and Specker, Theorem Zero in their famous paper, <clears throat> um, uh, which uh, that, that states that you can even go beyond that. You can have uh, classical interpretations, which are so weird, uh, that um, that you cannot use them to embed, you cannot use the associated two values, two valued measures to embed those uh, observers from the quantum con from configuration into a classical domain, into a classical uh, larger Boolean algebra, just because for instance, they, they cannot be separated by classical means. Or in the strongest form, there are configurations of observables which do not allow any classical interpretation at all. These uh, such, any such uh, configurations are called coach and Specker type configurations. So uh, they won't have any kind of consistent classical uh, interpretations to valued states relative to the assumptions of what constitutes a two valued state. There is a technical issue here as well. There is a kind of arbitrariness of finite proofs involved yielding inconsistent contradictory classical predictions. And this is due to the fact that classical predictions are contingent on the finite configurations involved. We will talk about that later again. But for the time being, let me just um, allude to this fact that uh, given, uh, say, some, uh, some preparation procedure, some pre-selection pre procedures, and you want to measure something, post-select something, you have basically two terminal points, one input terminal and one output terminal. And um, in between, you can have uh, very, different, um, very different structures of observables intertwining intertwining uh, contexts, uh, which yield very different classical behavior and predictions. And so you can have in the extreme case, uh, the same input and output terminals, the same um, uh, pre-selection and post-selection procedures, uh, but you, you can have contradictory, um, contradictory classical predictions on, of what will happen, for instance. Um, this, this, uh, if you prepare it in this particular way, then an event cannot occur, or uh, that it can occur. So, so this is this is certainly an issue, and we will talk about that later. <clears throat> um, there is a tactics with regard to classical probability, subject to existence. I mean, if there don't exist any classical interpretation, 
it doesn't exist any classical interpretation and it makes no sense to apply these techniques. But as long as there exists sufficiently many, let's say, uh, separably, su such that every atom, every elementary proposition is, is separable, uh, then we can, we can do the following thing. We can seek all extreme events, outcomes that can happen or occur and are mutually exclusive in, the, in every single context. We will come back to, um, to a demonstration later. So, so um, basically, if you have a Boolean algebra, a single Boolean algebra of, uh, uh, say, uh, 100 possible outcomes, then you have 100 possible extreme events uh, associated with outcome one happens, outcome two happens, and so on and so forth. Yeah? And if you, if you have more context, then uh, you assume that, that, um, that you have two valued measures um, or truth assignments with, which assigns uh, per, per context this condition. Yeah? This is, this, is uh, this extreme condition. And of course, if you have intertwining contexts, then you have to take care uh, by bookkeeping that you you that, that all your your requirements with regard to mutual exclusivity um, and completeness are are satisfied. So this amounts to the construction of all two valued states that assign one atom or elementary observable per context the value one. So in a generalized beam splitter, you might say this port fires, yeah? This is, this is the atom, the port, the elementary observable that fires gets, the way, gets assigned the value one and all the others remain silent. Uh, they get assigned the value zero. This of course, as I alluded earlier, is straightforward for single and multiply uh, isolated contexts, but less trivial for intertwining ones. You have to, you have to search for them. And then um, once you have that, um, in order to get all the classical probability distributions, you take the convex com combinations of all these extreme cases and identify these with the respective probability distributions. You will, it's uh, for, for simple cases, it's quite simple. You will, you will see that uh, um, uh, when we come to the respective um, examples. Let me just give you another prerequisite, the Grigi type orthogonality hypergraph. Um, if you have multiple contexts, uh, this, uh, this Grigi diagrams proved uh, to be, um, or in general terms, orthogonality hypergraphs proved to be very helpful for a structural presentation of those, of those, um, um, of, of, of those uh, observable structures. And um, so, so what, what you do with this is um, usually you would have a complete graph um, which, which represents an entire context. But uh, with hypergraphs, you just, uh, you just do the following. You, you identify um, a smooth line with an entire context. Yeah, a smooth line can be a straight unbroken line or a circle or ellipsis or anything like that. It has to be smooth. Uh, and this represents an entire context. And there are little, little points on the line representing the elementary observables, the elementary propositions, yeah? <clears throat> So these are the atomic propositions of the context that draw, drawn in small circles, overlaying the lines and contexts intertwining at a single atomic proposition or observable are represented as non-smoothly connected lines broken at that proposition. We will come to that uh, quite fast. So, so basically you have a smooth line uh, which, which uh, represents um, the, the context then you have uh, small circles. 
and and uh, re representing the the elementary propositions. And if you have more than two contexts and they intertwine in a single element, then uh, then uh, uh, those um, those lines. This is context one and this is context two. They are broken here uh, along these um, along these um, intertwining observables. In Hilbert space realizations, the straight lines are smooth curves. So the context um, <clears throat> represent orthogonal bases or equivalently maximal observables. If you are not familiar with the term maximal observable, you should probably look at Halmos' very fine book, um, uh, Finite Dimensional Hilbert Space, where in the um, um, commutator section, uh, at, at the, at, towards the end of the book, he has a paper on these maximal observables. Basically, it says that um, um, motivated by the spectral decomposition of uh, observables, um, you basically say that all observables that are co-observables uh, can be represented by a single operator, a single Hermitian operator in finite dimensions. Uh, and, um, and, and this is the one basically through the spectral decomposition um, uh, which contains the, the um, resolution of the identity, which is the um, <clears throat> theodic uh, product of the, 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 the vectors. And these vectors have to be uh, from um, all vectors of the autonomic basis. So basically you have not really a one-to-one -one correspondence because you can have various, uh, still various um, 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 uh, eigen, um, eigenvalues, but, um, but basically through this uh, spectral decomposition um, uh, containing the orthogonal projection operators and the orthogonal projection operators are, correspond to um, the theodic products of the autonomal, autonomal base of a single autonomal basis. Uh, so, so you have this strong uh, connection. <clears throat> and in quantum logics, you sometimes call them Boolean subalgebras or blocks. And points on these straight lines or smooth curves represent elements of these bases. Yeah, just uh, unit vectors. That is two points on the same straight line or smooth curve represent two orthogonal basis elements. From dimension three onwards, spaces may intertwine in com common elements. I mean, this is also clear. If you are in dimension two, uh, you cannot have such a con configuration because if you have one element, uh, then, then the other element in two dimensions that is orthogonal is of course um, uh, uniquely defined and you cannot have anything that, that, uh, that is different. But in three dimensions, you can have uh, such a configuration in terms of Grigi diagrams, yeah, um, which corresponds uh, to two autonomic bases rotated along a single uh, a single um, a single leg. Yeah. So so this leg here, if I call this A, this corresponds to this here. Yeah. In the original, let's say this is context number one. Yeah. You can have B here and C here. So this is B and C, and you can have here the new. Uh, B prime and uh, C prime, uh, this would correspond to, let's say, B prime and C prime, or C prime and D prime, yeah? So I, I think that's quite clear. Um, um, you, should, you, should, um, you should rehearse that a little bit if you don't understand why uh, you cannot connect two bases in two dimensions. This, this connection, this intertwining element is only possible from dimension three onwards. And this is actually 
And this is actually the reason why it gets interesting uh, with Gleason type theorems and Koch and Specker theorems from dimension three onwards. Okay, so um, let's just um, <clears throat> let's just rehearse a little bit. Let's just uh, go to the case of a single context and apply the concepts um, that that have been developed so far. And um, at that point, you may relax and uh, sit back and and uh, play this uh, previous movie again or whatever, and um, and hold it. Um, and and try to do some examples of your own, which you might even create by yourself. Yeah. So I will stop this video now and proceed uh, shortly with the next video.